My name is Thorsten Aargaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world photographing and teaching photography. Today I'm gonna talk about what is the Leica Q. The Leica Q is basically 100 years of photographic genius applied into one small camera and this camera sells like hotcakes. I have used this camera for quite a while and you can probably tell from it that it has been banged up a little bit here and there. What I do on my website is I write articles about cameras and photography. I don't review cameras, I only write about the cameras that I use myself. So what I write is user reports. So on my website you can find free articles about the Leica Q and you can also uh, buy and download my new book, uh, Leica Q Masterclass Photography. Before I tell more, I should warn that once you get this camera, it looks small and innocent, but it's going to make you dream about the Leica M. And then this is the Leica M. Then you want this one. Then you find out there's also this one. And this one comes with a $11,000 Noctilux lens. And there's also this lens that is really nice to have. And this lens. And it's going to continue like this once you get into this. So that's just a warning. If you don't want to get there, stop the video now. The history behind the Leica Q is basically the Leica M here. And the story with this camera, because this camera has been a classic for 100 years now, the story with this camera is that Ernst Leitz, who owned Leica camera more than 100 years ago, he hired a guy called Oscar Barnack. And it's a really funny story because he was headhunting Oscar Barnack. And Oscar Barnack said, no, I don't want to come work for you. There's no reason I can't work for you. I'm ill. I can only work a few months a year. I have to restore my health the rest of the time and so on. But Ant Lights, who had several thousand employees, he was still hunting down Oscar Barnack. And eventually, Oscar Barnack started at Leica Camera in Wetzlar in Germany. And he got as a job to just run a department. He didn't have any certain things he had to do. He could basically just do whatever he, he would come up with. So I don't know what the deal was, but that's how he was hired and that's what he did. So Oscar Barnack, he was really into uh, movies. And 100 years ago, movies was brand new. They didn't even have uh, speak on them. Like they still had like a piano player or somebody playing underneath uh, <laughs> the movie in the theater. So that was the very new thing that was like brand new and he was really into that. And he also built for Leica, he built like a metal uh, film camera and that was, even that was brand new because they used to do them of wood. So doing a camera in metal was like what? So he did that. But one of the things he wanted to do was, or one of the problems they had back then with film was that you had those big rolls of, of film stock and the chemistry in them wasn't the same. So he came up with this idea that if he made a small metal box and put on a lens, he could put in a little piece of film inside this camera and you could do test shots and then you could develop it and that way you could fine tune each big roll of film so everything looked the same. So that was his idea uh, or why he did the first Leica. But then somehow he got this idea suddenly, small negatives, big prints. And that was also a brand new concept back then. I mean, this is like inventing the iPhone or something today. So before he invented a small camera with a small negative and big prints, all cameras were big wooden cameras you put on the tripod. So suddenly he came up with this idea, I can make a small camera and I can make the image quality the same as a big camera. What Oscar Barnack did back then actually changed photography forever. So today when you look at a small camera like this, you may not recognize that it's him who made it first. So there's a few things in the camera that he designed that we still use. And one thing is that he decided for a size of film, and that was the 24 times 36 millimeter film. And if you ever shot with film, you totally recognize this format. If you haven't shot with film, then if you open your camera, and you look uh, in here where the sensor is, 
is exactly that same size as 24 times 36 millimeter. That's the format he invented, the size of it, and it's even said that the reason we had 36 pictures on a film roll is because that's how far Oscar Barnard could stretch out his arms. So he totally invented that, and today when you buy a camera and it's called full frame, that's his format. But maybe even more important, we got small cameras, you could actually, it was a portable camera, you could go out and you could take photographs, and people wouldn't really notice you because they were used to those big cameras on a tripod that you had to be standing very still in front of to take a picture. So that's how he changed everything. So this is basically the real Leica. This is the Leica M that big photojournalists have used for the last 100 years and made amazing pictures with. And that's not really the problem with this camera. The problem with this camera is that the body alone costs around $7,000 as a digital camera. And then you also need a lens. And a lens like this is three and a half, four thousand dollars $4,000. So you're looking at more than $10,000 to get into this system. And that's a problem. And people keep asking, can't Leica just make why do they have to make so much money? Why does it have to be that expensive? The reason is that everything is handmade and the quality is, to say it mildly, extreme. There's no middle way. It's, everything is like the perfect balance, the perfect quality, the perfect optics, uh, and it's handmade. So Leica came up with the Leica Q. And the Leica Q is basically all the qualities of the M, but it's a modern camera. So it's almost like if you took the camera that Oscar Barnack made 100 years ago that was like a piece of metal and was very mechanical and you mix it up with the iPhone, then you would get the Leica Q. The Leica Q is simply a modern camera and when it came out, it just showed the competitors this is how you make a really quality camera and really high-tech, fantastic, simple design. So it has some very interesting things. First of all, it has a fixed 28 millimeter lens that is a really light, strong lens. It's a 1.7 and it's a Leica lens, of course. It has autofocus, which the M cameras have manual focus. That could sometimes be a problem, but this one is easy to use and it's always ready. And you can also go manual focus on it. It has an interesting little feature here that you can go macro. And if you look what happens to the metering here, when you go macro, it changed the whole scale. So that's a very like a way of doing it, like this mechanical perfection. And it's neat and it's very practical. And if you look at the backside, you can see how slick the design is. There's no weird buttons sticking out or anything. This is just a beautiful camera. And it just sits uh, in the hand really perfect. And if you look through the viewfinder, you will see the most bright and precise viewfinder of any uh, cameras available right now. Like a Q is really slick. It has, you look at the back side, how nice it is. It has touchscreen and it's like an iPhone. So it has the macro feature. So as soon as you turn it to macro here, you see the whole scale just changes over here. It's just one nice little detail. It's very Leica. They know how to do mechanical stuff. So you have the 1.7 lens, 28 millimeter. You have the focus here that is automatic. And you can also go manual focus if you want to. You can even connect it to your iPhone. So you can just go in here and set it up to work with your phone. So that's some of the things that the Leica Q introduced. Um, and it does it for a total of $4,200 or something like that. And to give you an idea what that means, it means that if you buy a 28 millimeter lens like this for the M system, that lens alone is five or $6,000. So compared to other Leicas, this is a cheap Leica. I know $4,000 is some money, uh, but that's, that's how, how far Leica could stretch it <laughs> for economical camera. That's it. Um, and I know Leica expected to sell a few thousand a year, and they, they sell basically the same amount of uh, the Fuji camera that is also very popular. So that's a big success, and that means it's been unavailable on the shelves for ever since it came out. So usually you have to be in, on the waiting list for it, or 
you just have to stumble in, be lucky and stumble into one that is in stock somewhere. And it's probably going to be like that for a while. So the Leica Q is very simple. I use it together with my other cameras as my always ready camera. I find the M is more artistic and I told you in the beginning, once you get this one, you start dreaming about this one and one more, more lenses, that's just how it goes. But in itself, it's a great camera and I use it just that I can just turn it on, go macro and then I can take a picture of anything and it just works and it makes great quality. Then I have also a hand grip for it that I actually like the hand grip here, uh, except it makes the camera bigger. So it's almost the same size as an M. Um, so I'm a little bit on and off with this hand grip, but I really like the grip of it. The lens shade here is actually one I made. Uh, the one it comes with, you could use it without the lens shade, but the one it comes with is this one. Um, and I didn't like the design of this one so much. It looks like this is very compact and kind of nice, but I didn't like the style of it. I like the old school <laughs> Leica uh, lens shades, the, the so-called ventilator shades. It reminds me of that you go to war with the camera and do some important reportage work. So I had this one made and then of course people asked, that's nice, can I get one? And then I had them made, so you can see below the video, you can actually, you can order these if you, if you want. There's no point in this one. It does provide a little bit of shade, but it's mainly just for decoration and then it's protection. Uh, so that's how I protect my camera when it bangs into walls and stuff. And usually when I buy a camera like this, I buy extra battery. Uh, this is the charger that comes with, a, with the camera. And then I buy one extra battery. Uh, and I never use the cables that it comes with. I use these uh, Apple plugs. So I have a travel series of these so I can plug it into everywhere in the world. And straps, as soon as you get a Leica, you learn that there's lots of interesting camera straps in nylon, leather, all kinds of colors. Uh, and you might actually build a little collection of those and that's also part of the fun with the Leica Q. That was my What is the Leica Q presentation. As I said, go onto my website and there's free articles about the Leica Q with sample photos and everything. And also on my website, if you're really smart, you sign up for my mailing list so you get a free ebook about photography and you get alerts when there's new stuff about photography and the cameras I use and the lenses I use. And also, of course, if you want to, or if you have the camera and you want to know more about it, you can buy and download my book, The Leica Q Masterclass Photography. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.